Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting episode of the world's number one wine and stupidity podcast. He is the smart one, I am the pretty one and you are watching episode... Far out. 16? 16 of the odd couple try wine slash... The odd couple try gin and tonics. Fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> and what a day we've got for it. 32 degrees outside. Bloody hot. Beautiful blue sky, some unique uh, cloud formations. Fantastic timing to do this particular show. Uh, this is all you, buddy. Go for it. Oh, me? Yep. Okay. Um, so we have picked three gins at random. Um, so what I've done, I've gone one which is a local one for us on the Mornington Peninsula, which is the Maritime. I have never tried it, never heard of it, don't know what's going on there. We then have something from Yarra Valley, which is the world-renowned Four Pillars. Mm-mm-mm. Know that one well. Currently voted as the best gin, dry gin in the world. Congratulations, Four Pillars. Well done. And in fact, I read a, 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 another comment about Four Pillars that was done by the Distiller Magazine or whatever, or the head of the Gin Association. And he said that Four Pillars is the most exciting gin distillery in the world because of the stuff they're turning out and the quality they're doing. So, beautiful. So we've got a world champion. And next to it, we are in Adelaide in South Australia who not only knock out world-beating wines, they are now doing world champion gins. This one is 78 degrees from Adelaide Hills Distillery, and that was the best gin in the world in 2017. Prior to... uh, So we've got two world world champions. Awesome. And this one here. Although I I will also comment that uh, 78 degrees has a current world champion in their gin range from this year. Um, and that's for the dessert um, dessert level gin. I think it's to do with the um, amount of alcohol. So it's a, a lower alcohol um, gin. Okay. And they've been considered the best in the world for it. So there we go. Two world champions. Go Australia. That's awesome. You've come um, dressed as a Colombian drug dealer today. What's the I deal with that? I have indeed. Uh, in case you forget which one of us is which, I'm the one in the hat. There we are. All right, how do we do this? Well, what if you're going to um, buy good gin, good quality gin, and these are, as near as damn it, about 70 bucks each, you've got to have good quality mixer, and that goes with anything. It's like, don't buy single malt whiskey and, and pour a load of Coke into it. Ew, don't pour uh, any Coke in don't any put whiskey. Any in a blend, you have to, because it's blends are horrible. Um, so what we've done, we've gone with the Fever Tree, which is the, the upmarket, uh, but sort of mass quality uh, tonic. They do a various range. I haven't tried them all, so we've got the Mediterranean flavours, which I think has got to give you some salty sea flavours. We've got the Cucumber, which has got some cucumber essence in it, and the, the bog standard Indian dry tonic on the end. So what we're going to do, we're going to try the gin, uh, the tonics first, just to see the different flavours, then we're going to try the gins, and then we're going to decide which are the best matches. Jesus. How does that sound? It's going to be a long show. Sounds like be we're a going to lot be drunk. of drinking. All right, let's get started. So you well, want to... you start with that, because I've also got to talk about the condiments. Okay. Bang. We've got your bog standard lemon. We've got your standard lime. We've got the not so unusual cucumber. We've got blueberries squeezed in. Lovely. And we've also got some basil to give that lovely anise flavour. So all of those things will in some way complement a gin. So there we are. Okay. So we can do it so many different ways, but first of all, we're just going to go with the fever tree quickly. Which Mediterranean. Mediterranean? Ooh. It does smell like the beach. That's nice. I never, th- I, I, the idea of drinking tonic straight, because it's so tart and raspy, yeah. You could just drink that as it is. Okay. You don't need any gin in that. Right. There's a nice little sweetness on the back of it as well, isn't there? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's go with the cucumber. 
Come on, we've only got 40 minutes. Now, I went to um, a, uh, a golf course on the border of um, the Netherlands and Belgium, Oost End it's called, and they, they, they had a, a gin bar. They had 27 gins and 10 tonics to mix and match. Smells like cucumber. It does smell like cucumber. Tastes like cucumber. Oh, yum. There's less, um, there's less sort of aromatics and mm. spices in that. It's sort of cumber with soda water, but nice. Very yeah, refreshing. it's more like soda water than it is tonic for me. That's a lovely, refreshing drink. I think that's... So if, if you're a teetotaler and you want a gin and tonic, I would suggest going to buy either one of those and have a and tonic. If you're a teetotaler and you want a gin and tonic, I would suggest you have a gin and tonic, put your big boy pants on and get in there, son. Next. There we are. Great summer drink for teetotalers. Um, they sit beautifully by themselves. It'll be interesting to see. This is the straight up. No flavours, no... Well, this is the Indian, which is the standard, which yeah. I'm most, I suppose everyone's most yeah. used to. Yep. It's the only one that has... You say quinine, 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 whatever it is. Good for uh, COVID as well. Mm. That's going... Yeah, it's a good version of Indian tonic water. It, it is, nice. yeah, yeah. Clean. Very bright. Bright in the mouth. Mmm. Okay. Okay. Do you have a oh, favourite? Oh, now you get that. Tonic essence off the back. Yum. Yum. Okay. So we've done the tonics. You got a favourite in there? Uh, yeah, probably the uh, the cucumber or the Indian, I think. And but all quite pleasant. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. But they are. They're brighter and um, crisper than your. Don't say <coughs> Schweppes or anything like that. Than your standard like supermarket brands that Guys, that I would normally honestly, that you'd normally get in a thing. If you're paying 70 bucks for this, spend $5. That's right. all it is. It's only $5 to get a quality tonic. Don't talk down to the people. They might have lost their job in the pandemic. Sorry if you lost your job during the uh, pandemic. <laughs> Any news, Drew? Why don't we uh, get cracking on this? No. So it's like I'm carrying the show. Um, it, interesting that we jumped off wine and, and went to gin... Um, because I've just heard that China has now imposed a levy on Australian wine imports. So we're going to have a so, backload of wine sitting around. Yep. Yeah, India, uh, sorry, China have just said, no, 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 Australians are dumping wine in India, which is a load of rubbish. Um, and they are going to stick a tariff or they, they, uh, what do they call it? A levy or a... Trade levy, trade yes, tariff. Yes, something. They're not actually calling it a trade, but they call it something else. Of between 105 and 200 percent. Ah. Your standard levy's between five and 15 percent. Uh, it just sounds like more wine for me. Everyone, get out and buy some Australian wines. Then. Okay. There go. This is Maritime from the Bass and Flinders Distillery. Do you want ice? Yeah, I will have some ice. In the glass, are we good? No. Tell me how to ice. Good. Shit. Would you like some gin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a small amount, thanks. Oh, so we're, so you want us to we're, we're supposed gonna to go taste this now? We're going to go neat. Neat. To start with, rocks. Oh, you could dab that behind your ears and go out for the night. Could you? <laughs> yeah. Wow, what a per whereabouts are these guys? Oh, Peninsula. Oh, Peninsula. Oh, they're on the down the right down the end. Bass and Flinders. Yeah. All right. Wow. That is, honestly, you could wear that to go out of an evening. The aroma is sensational. It's very floral. Oh, it is. Tastes like a, uh, one of my Nan's Duna covers. <laughs> or a curtains. Maybe a curtains. Tablecloth. Have you eaten your Nan's curtains? No, it's how I imagine they taste. Do you flavour... <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Do you flavour all your... Um, Nan soft furnishings? No, only the, mainly the ones that have flowers or foods on them. Okay. Yeah. Mm. 
It's a nice honey and is there some vanilla in there? Mm. There's a um, little bit of aniseed, slight yes. bit of aniseed yeah, that's what in I was, there. That's what I was trying to get. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about drinking it neat like that? And I don't really like picking it. Picking it up. I, I don't like it at all. What I, you don't like this gin, or you don't? No, like no, drinking it absolutely neat? not. I actually really like the gin. Um, I don't like drinking it neat. When we went to that gin tasting, yeah. um, one of our one of our first outings as the now famous uh, odd couple. Um, yeah, it was hard for me. I, I get um, I get sort of heartburn or reflux with. Um, Straight, straight liquors. Yeah, and I don't. I mean, whiskey. I'm fine with as long as it's got a couple of yep. uh, ice blocks in it. But this specifically, um, I was str- I was struggling after about half an hour at the gin tasting. <laughs> I had to get a I had to get a, a beer or a soda. But it's oh. it's lovely. It's really beautiful. Really okay. beautiful. There may be some people out there who are going seventy bucks for a bottle of gin. If you went and bought Gilby's or what's the other. Stock standard. Uh, Gordon's. 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 If you a beef eater. Yeah, and if you went and bought any of them, I will tell you straight up, right now there is no way you could do this and drink it neat. No, it's even... It's the, and there's there's two levels because I do a bit of gin and, and then, then you've got sort of another level up from the, you know, Gordon's and that type of crowd that you're going to get served in a bar. Um, there's your Tangeray and your... Um, what is it? There's a couple sapphire. of... Sapphire. Sapphire, yeah, Bombay. Yeah. Um, and, but, th- but that's, even that's, but that's now, better than... That's Bombay came out and it was up here and now it's kind of... Yeah. Yeah. And but they, but they all tank, do... Tank 10 and those are sort of in here. Yeah. The, that, that's, nicer, that's nicer than your 50, these which is good. Are, these are what you would call artesian. Yes. Small batch. That's big number. So... So that's Bass and Flinders oh. Distillery, established in 2009. Maritime Australian dry gin, grape-based, batch distilled, Mornington Peninsula, and um, I don't know, give them a Google. And where'd you get this from? Is this, are we Dan murphys again? We did, in fact, go to Dan Murphy's, and I had to leave early because the amount of gin that Dan stocks is remarkable. Um, they have a whole section just on local Australian gins. They've got a whole section on internationals going from rubbish right up to good quality. A lot of Japanese gins in there. I know mm. this big selection. And then they've got a hub, another whole section full of, um, I guess you call them flavoured gins mm. or botanical gins. So um, some that's got elderberry or strawberry gin or whatever. Um, so yeah, it, it, you just, what am I going to get? Well, how, how do I so, start on this? So I just squeezed a couple of uh, blueberries well, in seeing there. there from the, um, seeing there from the peninsula, let's add the coastal... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So we're going Mediterranean on the peninsula with a bit of blueberry. Mm, that's even better than yeah, straight. Yeah, lifts it out. Ah, oh, delicious. Mm. Absolutely Delicious. Oh, yum. Oh, was I supposed to put the blueberries in there? Well, I've just been eating can, them like it's my job. You can put you can put... Shout out, Gary V. If there's... Um, because there's some aniseed in there, you might, like, taste a bit of basil. Basil faulty? Then, well, I, you have to rip the leaves. I know how it to, works. To release it. I, thought, I forgot that I don't have a muddler. Oh. Oh, mud, mud, muddler, not mother. I've still got a mother. Yeah, lovely lady. Mm. That is delightful. Mm. Thank you very much and well done, Maritime. Yep. And we're not doing prices at the end. We're already saying it. So that's we, a, we basically that's said a, there was near as damn at seventy bucks each. So it might be seventy two and seventy seven and sixty nine and mm. uh, call it seventy bucks each. But go get it. That's that delicious. I'm going to give that an 8.5, and the only reason I'm going low is I need to save room for the other ones. But um, terrific start. Fantastic. I'm giving that four and a half lime wedges. Four and a half lime wedges? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, shall we move on to... Um, <laughs> being as you've got nothing to report or say or add to this. I really don't. No? What are you doing with your life? 
Oh, a few things. Mm. Got my fingers in some pies. Oh. Got some fire irons in the fire. Got some zebras on the trolley. Then you're saying I'm starting. What do you think? Let's get it going. I'm thinking of opening up a blacksmith. Opening up a blacksmith? Yep. Why, did you yep. swallow something? No, it's just one of the irons I've got in the fire. Mm. Well, you're Bloody doing nothing. nothing. You are absolutely adding nothing to this show. What's next? I've got to do everything. And no matter what content I put through, we're going to Four Pillars Gin, considered the best in the world mm. right now. Mm. We've talked about this already, but they do a... They do a... Um, no, you can pour that into the other glass. Shiraz Gin? Uh, yes. Which... I put in my belly a lot on the regular, <laughs> and it is absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. So I'm excited. I don't know that I've ever had the plain, the, just the walk up. There it is. Plain gin. I, so I this think there's be... now four or five um, incarnations um, of uh, Four Pillars Gin. Okay. Um, yeah, so they really are killing it. Are they Yarra Valley? Are they? They it just are. Well, Hills, Melbourne on Hillsville. The Oh, Hillsville. To be, to be precise. That's where the marsupials live. That's where the marsupials are. Out the back of um, the Yarra Valley. Mm. Okay. Oh, see, no, that's, Whoa! That's, <laughs> that's more serious. That's more serious. <laughs> Man. This is really going to hurt. In a good oh. way. This one, ca- <laughs> this, this one comes up and gives you a kiss on the cheek. This one comes up this one and just rapes smacks you. you. <laughs> Okay, wasn't expected. But in a delightful, that. in a delightful way. Oh, I mean, it's just super. It's just you would swear if you were tasting with your eyes covered, you would swear that 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 was a far higher alcohol percentage. Oh yeah. Than it is. And oh in man. Fact, in fact, it's how that is so creamy. It's slightly higher, oh. but only 1%. Wow. Yeah, Creamy. that's something else. I'm glad I reserved a, oh. a 9 or a 10. <laughs> it, it's a classic juniper nose on it. Right, so which one do I want for this then? Oh. Probably the cucumber? Well, see do the... I, do um, I want to diffuse a little bit of that? Um, you could. I'm, I might actually go... Um, you want Indian? Yeah. All right, well, let's do it. Together, and I'm going to go lime. Oh, there goes all the ice. Splodjo of the Indian. Get that mixing around. Oh yeah. So there's no doubt that it's clean. They're all better with. They're all better <laughs> with tonic water. There's a. Bombshell for you. <coughs> Don't just start sculling the whiskey plain. Mm. I know there'll be hardened, <coughs> hardened whiskey uh, <coughs> uh, aficionados out there who will say, "No, no, you've got to try it." But yeah, that's that's what happens. <coughs> <coughs> Glenn's just learning how to drink. <coughs> Keep talking. <coughs> this is filling. I am filling. Okay. Do I need some ice in there? Um, Absolutely delicious. It's, it is delicious. It's different. Uh, it's as, <clears throat> good, as good or better. But, uh, and I know Americans. I'm having it with a different gin, but I think I'm preferring the Mediterranean gin over the stock standard. Yep. Yeah? Yep. Which I didn't think uh, mm. initially at first try while they were by themselves. I think we've messed up by trying any of this shit by itself. I think we should have just made... No, you've you got to... Gotta made try nine by glasses to... of gin, one with each of the tonics yeah. on each yeah, of the... Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go back around and do it all again. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, we need to start Tune pouring. in next week when we're still on air. Uh, <laughs> and I'm getting a liver transplant. Yum. 
It's more. I'm just going to say it's more difficult to. I mean, I, it's t it's taken me it's taken me you know 18 months or so of doing the wines to be able to input any, if any, um, some some actual feedback on the flavours and the mouth feels and all that sort of stuff. This is so far removed from wine. It's such a different thing that I I mean, I'm right back to going. Ah, oh, it's just really good. I, mean, uh, I, I, I just no, have trouble getting I, all that. No, I'm, I'm going to dispute that because I think because of what you've learnt with the wines, you're, you can appreciate the flavours and the textures that are going on. Sure, I'm just not used to spirit. picking out what it is. I mean, there, there is, there's definitely complex aromats going on mm -hmm. in there and it's just lovely, especially when it's... It, by the way, we're in a, we're in a closed, stu we're in a closed <laughs> studio... <laughs> That's essentially made of brick and tin, and it is, um, you know, 32 degrees outside or something. So we are quite warm in here. So, but this is really beautiful. I mean, that's yeah. that's better than the first one. But don't take anything away from uh, Flinders because they they are completely like, different. Delicious. They are completely different. But again, with, with what you've learned, you will appreciate that that is creamier in the mouth than the uh, Maritime. Yeah. And you can, the different aromas you've picked up in each of them. Yep. And they're, they're completely different flavours. Yeah. That's a lot. Oh, 100%. Brighter and florals and um, like good, a good quality perfume aftershave. And, but this is kind of your, your ballsy, gutsy spirit. Yeah. That I'm really just wondering now the whether they're going to take that the right way, uh, us comparing it to an aftershave. Because usually that's a, <laughs> that's a negative when you. No, well, I, I meant it in a complimentary way. When we first smelt that, and I went, that is beautiful. I'd wear that. I just want to but shout out as well, um, uh, Toby Garbers, who I'm pretty positive it was him. It's a guy I went to school with, still around here in Mount Eliza, lovely, lovely gentleman. Probably most, most people will know him as well. He was captain of the football team and all that kind of cool jazz. But I'm pretty certain that at one stage he ran out of alcohol at a party and drunk a bottle of jupe because it said contains alcohol or some jupe. He drank perfume. I'm positive he drank perfume. Ah, jupe. Jupe. I hope I'm not making that up. I'm pretty certain I am. And if anyone doesn't know what... He's a professional married man Jupe now, is? So, uh, jupe, did you say? Jupe. It's a perfume. In case... It's a parfum. That's... Uh, it's an et de toilette. Jupe, spelled... J double O P. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Good chats. Good yep. chats. Okay. We're now going on to one of the. Um, oh man, this is kind of halfway between the two. Really? Uh, this is um, formerly the best in the world. Formerly the best. Uh, but the distiller still has a world champion. Um, gin in the stable now am i we did a is wine do they do the wine as well 78 degrees no 42 degrees south is the wine we did it's all right there's too many degreesings going on yes all good carry on so your cartography lessons are, <coughs> are you're starting to pick something up cartography yeah <clears throat> Seventy-eight degrees, forty-two degrees. Yeah, yeah. And it's not temperatures. Map making. Map making. I know what cartography is. Yeah. I just don't know how recognizing the label on a wine. You didn't or understand latitude and longitude last show. Oh, I did. I just couldn't remember the word. Mm. Okay, this is. I will say halfway between. In on on the nose. I really don't want to do it plain, but I will. You've got to do it plain to get the, the real essence of it. Okay. On the nose, this has the punchiness of the four pillars, but then just blossoms, see how we say, to give that lovely... Um, Florals. Romantic florals um, of uh, the maritime. So that is, 
that's kind of the this is a perfect segue so if you go I don't like that and I don't like that then this one is sitting beautiful I don't, I don't know how it is on the mouth but just on the nose that's what I'm getting I can smell it's going to be as creamy as the pillars mm-hmm mm. and I would say in terms of flavor Oh, but that's it's then going. I'm going to try the cucumber. You got some ice? Oh, that is really spicy. Is it? That is really spicy. Mmm. You wait for it. It's almost like a chili. It's peppery, a chili. Um, I think there's some bit of cinnamon in there. Oh man, I can see why people were going, oh, that's pretty good, isn't it? Um, oh, yum. All right, I'm going in. Oh, yum. And again, up, up comes that aniseed flavour. Um, star anise. Right now, yeah. I got. Yep, I didn't. You, you're yep. getting that. Yeah, um. it's spicy. But it's hot, spicy. Yeah. Mm. Good, warmy, warmy, warmy mouth. Yeah, it's it's like having a light curry. That's interesting. It's like a light Indian curry in your mouth. How or, freaking strange. Yeah, not uh, not a Thai curry, but an Indian curry. Yeah, it's pe it's peppery more than chilli, I yeah. reckon. But yeah. it, it's definitely hot. <laughs> How strange. <laughs> Which is fine. I mean, I like hot things and it's good. The reason, you know, the reason why curry and hot things are good during hot days, which seems counterintuintuitive, yeah. they make you sweat, make they you cool sweat you down. And, and that becomes the natural If you're not worried flight. about sweating because yeah. you're doing a TV show, it's a good... No, <laughs> that's fine. You're, right. you're okay with that, Drew? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going with the cucumber, thank you, because I'm saying this is peppery like an Indian curry. Okay. Spicy... Um, which is remarkable to be talking about gin like an Indian curry. It is, mm -hmm. but I like it. And so, also, it doesn't. St sorry, it just do it doesn't stay burning like no. you're eating chili. It it sets your mouth on fire uh, a little bit, yeah. and then it goes after twenty but, seconds. But then leaves a flavour in there, I... and that's when the star <sighs> anise and the other bits and pieces come through. So, if you're going to have an Indian curry, what do you uh, complement it with? Writer. So, I'm going with cucumber. Wait, what's writer? Well, that's your cucumber and yoghurt. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, when you have your hot spicy meal, you have your cucumber and yoghurt sure. to give you that balance. So, that's why I think with the complex... And what do the Greeks call it? With... Uh, tzatziki. Yeah. Same thing, isn't it? A bit of lemon yeah, and some yeah, pepper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Okay. You are so there's a cooking lesson to um, on how to do gin. Mm. Would you eat that with a curry? Wow. I always do beer or vodka and soda with a curry. Oh. Would you do that with a curry? That is, that's clever. You like that? That, that does work beautifully. Ooh. It almost... Glen and Adelaide Hills Distillery almost sitting in a tree. It's, it's almost changed its, its complexity. It's almost changed its entire nose on this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, say things, Glenn. Almost a bit... It's almost a muskiness now. Mm, try that with the cucumber. Can I just put cucumber in my glass? No, you've got lime and basil in your glass. Just try that with the... It, I mean, it seems to diffuse it. Not, it's not spiky anymore. Mm -hmm. But the flavours are still there. Mm. Mm. Wow. I'm adding an, uh, who's, aro I'm who, adding an aromatic to... Who's, um, whose idea was it to do gin? Because uh, I'm well pleased. Oh, yeah. They are three fabulous gins that... I don't think you can actually say one is better than the other. Oh, I can. 
um, in the sense that they are delivering um, at three different points. It's almost, it's, it's almost like comparing a, a Chardonnay to a Pinot Gris to a Riesling in some respects, mm. that they have three different flavour profiles, although this one in the middle kind of is the segue between the two. These two are, are extremes of each other, but there's no way of saying that's less than that. Um, and so I guess in some respects you've got to say, well done, Maritime. Well, we're not the judging panel of the world gin. We know um, nothing. We don't know a lot. Uh, we drink a lot, but we don't know a lot. Yep. And we know even less after we've drunk a lot. Um, these two are delightful. This doesn't have to go and sit in the corner and skulk and feel embarrassed at all. That can sit proudly head held high with those guys. Couldn't agree more. I actually... I think that I think the um, Mornington Peninsula one's my faves. Yeah. Yeah, I really like it. I like that big. I like the big um, sort of floral gear and the oh, t- honestly, aromatics. Honestly, I'm just got to stop saying that. I've said that like seven times already. But yeah, it's no, it's beautiful. It, 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 the, with, with the nose, with some is, of the coastal. The nose on this is absolutely sensational. Yeah, I'm going to do more of that. Oh, I've still got more. Yeah. I see. This. Um, oh yeah, I, I'll say straight up. That's got that has got the best note. That is the most inviting uh, aroma. Mm. Yeah, it's it, it, it is a it's a it's definite summer's day, isn't it? Yeah, we pop that in the um, backpack and I'm, head down I'm the thinking beach. L- late spring because you still got some floral, but you got a warmth. bit of warmth coming through. Mm. Um, Warmth in the air, in like the today. air. But that is so delicious on the nose. Beautiful. Mm. I'm gonna try. It. Mm. It's it's really difficult when we do this, and, and they're all good. I found it's, <coughs> it's probably less interest. <coughs> you right? <coughs> Jesus. Mm, I'm all right. What are you allergic to? No, I good just gin? don't know what it is. I've had no sense of taste or smell recently. Or fashion. So this is going with the cucumber. I still think this would be better Mediterranean because it's come. So Bass Flit, it's at the end of the peninsula, which means it's sitting on Bass Strait, which is the uh, waterway. Bass Strait is basically part of the Great Southern Ocean. It's just that they've stuck Tasmania in the way and called it something else. Bloody Tasmania. Mm. No, I love Tasmania. Mm. Tasmania is amazing. We should go. We should go down to Tassie and do it. We can do the oysters. We can go and do some whiskies all through there. Oh, yes. You know, oh, that'd be made with Snowy Mountain water, wouldn't it? Is well, that that's Tasmania? flowed all the way from Kosciuszko to Tasmania. Oh, shit. What am I doing? Franklin. Mount Franklin. Yeah. Is it? Don't no, they not no, have... The... Not Mount Franklin. Frank. Mount Wellington. Oh, God. Franklin River. Is Does Tasmania Remember, not have a huge water... No, da- no dams. The Green Party. They said no dams. Don't dam the Franklin. So it's the Franklin River. When was this? 76? <clears throat> yeah. Don't remember that. Um, not, yeah, I, I'm right. Not so good with the cucumber. I, with that Mediterranean flavour. I was busy in 76. I was in my dad's balls. <laughs> <sighs> not much has changed. That's why he wants to go to Tassie. Yeah, yeah Tassie seems nice. You know that farmer, what's the, um, the food critic turned um, Oh, turned yes, farmer? yes. You know who I'm talking about? Can yeah. we think of the name of his show or are we just uh, going to... That'll be Matthew, um, what's his name? Matthew, Matthew, and he has Fat Pig Farm. Yeah, and it's called like a homegrown farmer or... The land. Gourmet Farmer. The Gourmet Farmer. He really good show, Gourmet Farmer, look it up. Matt Evans. I saw him doing a Tasmania... Um, just going all around, sort of on the water, going around with all the fishermen and the oyster Wine dudes. glass bay and... Yep. Yeah, yeah, and it just looked fudging sensation. Yep. Absolutely fantastic. Bishano and all of those places. Mm. And, yeah, uh, Te- I said this last week that Tasmania is the food capital of the world. Is it, though? They have world-class abalone. They have world-class... Um, uh, all seafood from their craze out of King Island, 
their abalone, they're exporting seaweed to Japan. They have food grade seaweed that they export to Japan and soon they will have their certification to be pharmaceutical grade seaweed or kelp. So what happened with the, there was no kelp. What's pharmaceutical grade kelp? Do you well, smoke it's, it? it? No, well they use it in, in medicine. Oh. Yeah. So there, there wasn't any kelp in um, Tasmania in the, in the harbour of um, Hobart, Constitution Dock and all through there where they do the Sydney Hobart and the yachts come in. Um, but all the, the ships would come in, they let out their bilge, bilge pumps and all those, and so kelp started growing. And so they, the Tasmanian government puts out a contract for, for someone to dive down and chop up all the kelp because it's fouling the water. And a couple of guys went, oh, let's just go and have a look and uh, did some research. They went, oh, we'll do it. Yeah, we can sell this and shit. And so the government paid them to get rid of all the kelp and they dragged it all up and shipped it off to their factories and processed it and chopped it all up and sell it to Japan. Wow. Because it's the highest quality, because the water down there is so pure and pristine. Ah. It's a far better quality um, product than what the Japanese have themselves. That's interesting. So the government is paying this company to make money. Well, you wouldn't want anything from Japan's waters. They had a whole uh, <laughs> nuclear mischief the, oh, other, the uh, other year. Mischief, yes. Yeah. Yes, he of the understatement. Keithy's done himself a mischief. He's uh, only gone and exploded a nuclear power plant into the ocean. We, you know, the, have you seen the show where the sushi chef landed in Tassie on holiday and just went, this place is beautiful, and he opened up a little shop in yes. some little tiny town in Tasmania's west coast, I think. And so he's opened up a sushi bar. Everyone in the town never heard, never heard, they wouldn't know what sushi was, never seen Japanese food in their lives. Oh, I'd love to see the minister. Well, who's the minister from Tasmania He's going in for some sushi? The minister from Tasmania? Yeah, you know. Jackie Lambie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this mm. sushi's all right. <laughs> so now he, he's, he's become their biggest tourist attraction. Oh, this is a real thing, this not, is a, a, not real a show? real thing. So he just stopped there and went, wow, because he went and bought salmon there and just went, this is the best salmon I've ever eaten in my life. I think it's pronounced salmon. Don't rush me. Um, he is now open two, only two or three days a week. He just, he makes it all and he goes, bang, it's all sold. I've made enough money. I'm just going to kick back. The locals love him and he loves being in Tassie and he can speak about three words of English, but the whole town just goes, it doesn't matter. We love you. Come here. So there we are. Yeah. I think this has been a most successful, enlightening productive episode, do you not think? I, I mean, I, don't, I try not to think about these things. I'll leave it to our viewers. Well, you know we love gin and tonic, and, and all of these and many, many more available at Dan Murphy's at a store near you, or download the app and just have it home delivered if you're too drunk like Drew. I, I went down there and visited the store. I like that experience of being in store and mm. talking to people. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, none um, of that messy sitting at home waiting for a dude to hand it to you. What did you think of the um, the basil with the gin? Well, do you understand the basil aniseed gin aniseed do complimentary? Is put is them all in a cocktail. I'm going to put everything in. Blueberries. You've got to crush the blueberries. To crush blueberries. Shout out Gary V again. He crushes blueberries like it's his job. There we go. One of his most viral mm. little things. Have I done lemon? Can we have someone, can we not, like the budget is, what? how come, we can't get someone to remove the pips? What are we paying you people for? Bullshit. All right, and <sighs> what? Coastal. Yep, coastal. And I can't believe Ooh. the talent has to take pips out of a piece of lemon. It's ridiculous. I'm not going to um, call a winner. I think everyone's a winner today. Yeah, I don't think it's a winner type thing. It isn't a winner. What would I... Where would I go to first? Have you had more of that? Yes, I have. That's <laughs> really good. It's the winner. No, it's really good. Oh, uh, is for it our palates, that, that's doing it. Are they all the same price, you said? Yeah, look, basically, I haven't got my glasses on, but basically they're all in the 70s, I think. Hang on, Pops. 
78 for Adelaide Hills. Oh, 64 for Four Pillars. 64, there we go. El Cheapo. Oh, that's just moved up a notch. Yep. And 77.99 for the, what is it called? Bass and Flinders. I, I'm going to go dead heat. Beautiful. I'm going absolute dead heat. Yep. All great in their own right. In, in their, they're delivering different flavours and textures and experiences. Uh, uh, um, and you, you, you really, you, you, there's no way of saying that's better than that. I wouldn't drink that. I no. would rather have that. I agree. Except that one. But I like an underdog. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, not that they're an underdog, but just that the others are well-known brands. Um, yeah, get out and have some of that. It's yeah. Bloody beautiful. So, there we are. Yeah. What are we going to do next episode? I don't know. I'm still like, if... if um, there's so many great uh, distilleries and wineries on the peninsula. I would super love... I'm not doing... Listen, we've, we've self-funded this thing the entire time. We don't have any advertising. We don't do anything. We no. do it out of... Complete out of love. To be honest... For each other. We were sitting there just doing this once a week anyway. So we thought, why not put this on YouTube? Then at least um, our kids can see yep. what drunks we were. Kids and grandkids. Um, but, yeah, if any of the, any of the distilleries... On the peninsula, Frankston, even like any of those places, want to reach out, and you don't even have to. Un this is not a plea for free no, alcohol. It's not free stuff. We'll we'll pay we'll for it, but if you want to actually reach out and have a relationship, like um, there's there's one that's doing whiskey. There's one's I'm doing not whiskey. Is it Chief, Chief Chief's son? Whiskey, which I think is yes. like Red Hill or somewhere yeah, down yeah, there. Yeah, I'm yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Forgive me, Hastings, yeah. maybe. I'm not really sure where mm. they are. Um, I had it uh, last year, and, and I actually posted a picture of it on my Insta page. Yeah, but anyone who wants a f wants a wants a little bit of um, promotion, yeah, um, we, we, we're still happy to buy get, it. But reach out and chat guys, to us because just come to us and say, "Hey, do you want to taste ours?" And we go, "Yeah, tell us where we can buy it and do it." And then if we say nice things, just share. Or tell come everyone. On them. Or come and talk about it. Give yeah. us some or notes. Yeah, come so on the show. We, so we know a little bit of your background and what it's about. Or if you're doing a range. There's at least four people who watch this, and that's four more people than you have right now. So, yeah. I mean, think yeah. it through, dude. What's the issue? Yeah, three of them are you, me, and Shari. So, hmm. yeah, okay. Um, My cats yeah, sometimes we'll, watch for a sec. We'll come and... Um, We'll come to your place and do it from there. Yeah. We don't have to do it from here. We can come and do it, and you can be on the show, and you, because obviously we're idiots, we don't know. So it'd be great if you were sitting there teaching us. Sure. About the processes and flavours and what you're trying to achieve, and, you know, more to it, education. Yeah. Invite an audience in. We'll do a live performance. We'll just be the travelling show going around. When Drew finishes his phone call. Drew's mum, okay. Don't know why she's ringing it's my phone instead of yours. Because <laughs> I didn't answer. So there we are. Thank you very much. And I'm going to say congratulations to Australian um, uh, distillers of gin. Um, yeah. I, I, I do know there's a, another um, South Australian Adelaide-ish um, gin distiller who last year uh, won gold. Um, the year that these guys won gold, there were only five gold medals handed out in the entire show. So, only five gold medals handed out in the entire show, so across everything. So, th they scored 95, that's what I remember, 95. So, that's remarkable. Okay. And anywhere in the 90s is great. 95 is brilliant. I think um, Sullivan's Cove won Whiskey of the Year with 95 or 96. And all the single malts from Scotland, which sit in a different category, the highest was 93. So that's why it was considered the best in the world, even in Scotland. So wow. there we are. There you go. Thank you very much yeah, for watching, um, everyone. If we go to Tassie, Patrick, invite us. We'll do this at your place. Much appreciated, and we'll see you next episode of the uh, Capital World. I'm the one in the hat. I'm the one in uh, the no, tat. Uh, hat and tat. He's got a cat. I ate a bat. Your mum's fat.